Gibran, you can start. A very good evening, everybody. We are honored to welcome you for day two of the faculty development program that has been organized by Mansukhani Institute of Management on intellectual property rights. Yesterday we had yesterday we had day one of this spectacular webinar series, which was conducted by Mr. Abhishek Nagya, and we are very happy to announce that we had a fantastic response to it with over 100, with over 100, 1,600 views and a lot of likes. Building on that positive feedback, we have today's session on counterfeiting of brands and trademarks by, and the speaker for today is Advocate Shabnam Khan. To introduce the speaker for today, I would like to request Mrs. Dia Udasi to come. A word about Dia Ma'am. Ma'am is an assistant professor at Mansakani Institute of Management for the past 15 years. She has completed her MPhil in management and is pursuing her PhD in management from University of Mumbai. Currently, she is also working on a minor research project which is sponsored by the University of Mumbai. She has contributed to a field of knowledge by authoring various number of papers in various research journals. Ma'am, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Gibran from AIP. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce our dynamic speaker for the day, Ms. Shabnam Khan. She will be sharing her expert views on today's topic, which is type of intellectual property that is counterfeiting brand or trademark. Making a mark in global markets, trademarks are integral part of any developed and growing economy. They not only attract us, but also create an emotional bond with the consumer that elevates brand recognition. They also act as a quick and reliable guide to the quality of a particular product or service. A world without marks is hard to imagine. Shabna Ma'am firmly believes and would also help us to believe that be the trademark of originality in this duplicate world. With her enriching experience of over 15 years as an intellectual property lawyer, Shabna Ma'am is an associate partner with RNA Technology and IP Attorneys. She obtained a Bachelor's of English Honours and LLB from Delhi University. Along with managing trademark portfolios for number of Fortune 500 companies, Shabna Ma'am also assists and advises them regularly with brand watches, clearance, filing and protection in India. Ma'am, is also a member of Bar Council of Punjab in Haryana and Business Networking Group for Entrepreneurs, Gurga. She has attended several international conferences and have also authored a number of articles in various leading legal and IP publications. She has been featured in the Super Lawyer Portal and also regularly advises startups and various NGOs on a pro bono basis. I would now like to take this opportunity to welcome Shabnam ma'am and request her to take over the session. Thank you everyone. Over to you ma'am. Thank you Dia. Hello and good evening everybody. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, as uh, Dia already mentioned, we are going to speak uh, and uh, uh, discuss few things about intellectual property uh, in particularly about trademarks. For all those of you who had attended the session yesterday, uh, I'm quite sure you all have a brief idea about what intellectual property is, what all it covers. And out of all the kind of intellectual property rights that we have, I think trademark is the most uh, common, so to speak, because we use brands, we use trademarks in our day-to-day -day life, right? From the moment we wake up to we go to sleep, we see brands, we see trademarks everywhere around us. So it's extremely important that we understand the value, we understand the importance of brands, and also understand the, you know, the uh, evils or the menaces which comes along if these brands are faked or if uh, people try and make counterfeit goods and products and try to pass off as originals, which is not the case. So I'm going to, uh, I have a very interesting presentation for uh, all of you. And uh, it's called the Unreal Campaign. And the Unreal Campaign is part of INTA, which is the International Trademarks Association. And it uh, started in the year uh, 2012 uh, by INTA. Uh, and INTA comprises of a group of uh, international companies, law firms, 
and uh, you know organizations and people who work towards uh, development and advancement of trademarks so i just start with my presentation without taking too much of time i'm going to share my screen and let's get ahead with it I think there is some issue with the presentation getting started. Uh, Viraj, can you uh, take over and uh, start the presentation from your end? I think the slideshow is kind of uh, hanged here. Is my screen visible to you now? Yeah, I can see the screen. Uh, so this is uh, what we were talking about. This is the Unreal campaign. And uh, this is all about, uh, we're going to see the uh, reason why we do this. The whole purpose of uh, doing the Unreal campaign is to you know, empower and educate youngsters, teenagers, people who do online shopping, and people who are really uh, you know, very conscious about brands. And uh, uh, the whole purpose is to make them uh, aware consumers so that they don't fall into the trap of buying goods which are not real. So because online shoppings are something which is very, very increasingly there in the market today. We don't usually go to the uh, physical shops to buy stuff anymore. So online, everything and anything can happen. So we need to make sure that what we are buying online is a real product and it's not a counterfeit. Next slide, please. So we've already talked about what the Unreal campaign is and uh, uh, going forward in the presentation, we're going to see a few videos. These videos have been recorded live, so uh, you might hear a, a little bit background noise, but uh, try and understand the, uh, these are real videos which have been uh, taken from the streets and from various people uh, randomly picked up uh, from the streets. Next slide, please. Do you know what a counterfeit good is? Um, I think so. Well, no. No. <laughs> no. Goods that aren't uh, from the real company and aren't as like the same material. Do you think counterfeiting is bad? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I do. Well, I think first off, it's illegal. The person that actually took time to make it gets no money from it or any type of reward for what they've created. I understand that people have to make their money sometimes. The laborers are paid like minimum wage, or there might not be like safe regulations. Next time on the Unreal Video Blog. How can you tell if a product is... You could play the next video as well. It's fake. Find out what's real or unreal.
One day I went to this famous flea market in Delhi but and I couldn't help but notice the amazing prices they were offering there. I went up to the salesman. He was constantly telling me about how the products are very real. Even though I was in a bit of doubt but I was lured in by the fact that the prices were so low so I just ended up buying the products. Within an hour of applying the makeup I had my face turned all red and i had rashes all over my face i realized the mistake i had made and i had to pay the price for buying something unreal find out what's real or unreal so i'm 16 and i want everything branded so both the videos that we've just seen the first one actually talks to a few people on the street asking them whether they really do know what counterfeit products are so these are common people like you and me some of them did really know what counterfeiting and had some slight ideas while others absolutely had no idea what counterfeit products are and the second video we uh, see this girl she's really lured into buying some branded makeup products which she picked up from the market because the prices were extremely low so she explains in the video here that what are the uh, what is uh, you know what is the low pricing it just lures the customer but the products that she bought were not real and it actually did cause her a lot of harm her skin turned red and she had all sorts of problems so this is a uh, one downside of not knowing what you're buying just don't get lured in by the cheap prices of the products they are most likely going to be counterfeits So, what is a trademark? We've been all talking about brands. We've all been talking about trademarks. So, what is a trademark actually is? Next slide, please. Any uh, trademark could be, you know, it could be any name, any word, any symbol, any logo, a device, a monogram, anything which you know defines you, your company, which distinguishes your goods and services. from another it can be called a trademark it could be a word just like the example here on the slide the big mac i'm sure we all have eaten the big mac so this is a trademark which is a word next slide it could be a design as you can uh, see this is a shell design here it's uh, it's not a word but it's a design which has been made it's a creative thing and uh, it's used for gasoline as most of us are aware for shell next slide please so this is a design mark this is a pepsi label a logo which also is a trade dress which, which you would have always seen on the bottles they wrap the packaging on the bottle this is an example of a design mark next slide please so what is the difference between a trademark and a service mark so a trademark is for uh, goods like products per se and service mark when you talk about service marks these are mostly to do with the uh, the services that we provide like financial services so the, here is an example of credit cards which uh, fall into service marks so apart from the words the logos the symbols that we talked about those are very traditional trademarks which are there in the system apart from those there are certain other kind of trademarks which are not traditional so to speak but then they fall into the category of non traditional trademarks now here on the screen if you can see there's a very uh, typical blue color so this is uh, uh, you know this is a, a tiffany's robin egg blue color which is a very different shade of blue and it so falls under a non traditional trademark next slide please this is the uh, perrier bottle this is another uh, a shape uh, which is considered as a non traditional trademark next slide here uh, you see this is a nivea cream bottle and most of us would have seen or used uh, this bottle some part of our lives even if i remove the word nivea cream from this uh, bottle or packaging i'm sure most of us will be able to recognize the product so that is the power of a trademark that is uh, the value that it holds next slide please another example of non traditional trademarks here if you see there are uh, this is a mcdonald's building so there are two canopies on the building here one is over the window and one is over the entrance so uh, mcdonald's corporation they actually uh, own registrations for this uh, 
uh, three-dimensional exterior design configuration which is there on the building. So this is another example of a non-traditional trademark. Next slide, please. So why are trademarks important for you as a, as a customer, as a consumer? Uh, when we search for a product or when we want to buy something, what is the first thing that we uh, put into the search engine that we're using? We put the brand name. It could be anything. It could be Lacme, it could be Ole, it could be Ponds, but you know what you're looking for. So that is how I want to use an Ole product. I don't want to use a Ponds product or a Ponds branded product. So you know the difference between the two products. You know the quality or the kind of product that you will get under one particular company name or the other company name. So you have preferences. So that is why trademarks are important for us as consumers because we expect a certain kind of, uh, you know, a certain kind of quality from that product because we know it's coming from certain source. We know it's coming from a certain company. So it has to be good. It has to be, you know, trustworthy. It has to be reliable or nothing is going to be wrong with the product, so to speak. So that is why trademarks are important for us because they give us uh, a comfort, a confidence to buy the products. Uh, next slide, please. Why are trademarks important for companies? Uh, we just talked about why do we buy branded products? Why do we favor certain products than compared to others? So why are trademarks important for companies? Just like we relate to uh, our choices uh, through the brand names. So the companies also, it is a way of communicating their emotions, their feelings, the value that they bring to their brand, to, uh, to the customers, to the consumers. So they also want to identify certain sections of consumers with their products. And they also want to be different from so many products in the market, which are in the same, uh, there must be hundred creams in the market. But why I want Ponds? Why, why, why does Ponds want to sell itself as a superior brand? So the trademarks, they establish their trademarks, they build their brand values, they cater to a certain consumer, they cater to a certain emotion that the consumer also attaches with the product. So that is the reason why trademarks are extremely important for companies. Any companies which has got brands, which are registered brands, they also have, you know, kind of a elevated value in the eyes of the consumers. They believe the company. They believe the products they are buying. They feel comfortable. They, they know that it's coming from a reliable resource. And so the product has to be good. Next slide, please. So I'm 16 and I want everything branded. It's all about the image after all. But this chase for image ended recently when I was embarrassed in front of all my friends. I had bought a pair of fake branded shoes from a nearby market. It was almost one tenth the real price. I went running with all my friends and uh, while I was kind of showing off my new shoes, my new shoe broke and I fell flat on the ground. And I understood why real remains real and fake is always fake. Find out what's real. So here you see in the video, this is a very uh, young boy. And just like many of the, uh, you know, children falling in that age group, they are very brand crazy. They want to buy everything branded. They want to show off between their friends. And they want to really, really show off uh, that we wear or use branded stuff. But he is lured into buying a counterfeit product. And he's actually bought a, a knockoff from the local market. And see how it has embarrassed him in front of his friends. His shoe not only broke, but uh, it's costed him actually. Uh, his reputation has been tarnished in front of the same set of friends where he wanted to really show off his new shoe. So uh, this is what we were talking about, counterfeiting. So what exactly is counterfeiting? So if I tell you in a very, you know, uh, layman kind of a language, anything which is illegally produced or illegally sold and which has a brand on it, which is not authorized by the brand owner, that is a counterfeit. Any, any trademark which is identical to the original one, but it's not real, 
any product which is not manufactured by the real authorized manufacturer and put a stamp of a brand over it is called a counterfeit next slide please so how does counterfeiting affect you we might think you know this product is really cheap i'm getting a really good deal and you know i might as well buy it who will know about it but in the longer run we don't realize that you know counterfeiting affects us it affects the a whole economy it affects the system and it affects everything in the end so particularly if i talk about uh, us as an individual what happens when we buy a counterfeit product a it's not going to be an original that we know for a fact b the quality of the product that we expect obviously it's not going to be the same quality product see it could be rather harmful to you rather than doing any good like we talked about the shoe that broke uh, maybe you know in the long run if he wears those shoes he might get problems in his feet or problems in his spine where because uh, shoes are very uh, something which are very uh, designed to taking the technical aspects into consideration but these counterfeiters they just want to mass produce things without any specifications designs or guidelines of how to manufacture a shoe and just put a fake uh, brand name on it so it affects not us it affects everybody if we talk about products counterfeiting is everywhere it's not only the bag that is there on the slide that you all can see it's there in pharmaceuticals it's there in uh, the food products that we get it's there in every single uh, chain of systems in the society so we have to be really uh, uh, mindful and we have to be really aware of how it's going to affect us and refrain ourselves from not falling into a trap of what sarit in the video just fell into the trap of buying that branded shoe for a very very low and cheap price next slide please so we talked about how counterfeiting affects us and uh, counterfeiting not only affects us it affects our community also as a whole see the counterfeiters they as i mentioned earlier they do not deploy any safe methods of uh, manufacturing products they have uh, uh, you know these uh, manufacturing plants which are uh, very substandard they engage child labor and they have all sorts of uh, zero regulations when it comes to manufacturing processes or people or so th the cost of the counterfeit products is so low that the margins of these manufacturers and sellers is very high so they end up making a lot of money and since uh, this money is surplus for them it attracts a lot of other uh, so to speak you know it it feeds criminal activities they they will invest this surplus money that they have in other things which are going to be harmful not only for you but for the entire community more so these people these counterfeiters they do not pay taxes so the legitimately the tax which the government should receive or which they should be using in the betterment of the society the parks the schools everything is just not there so it also you know takes away uh, jobs from people who lose their legitimate jobs at manufacturing facilities why because these counterfeiters have set up their own uh, manufacturing plants which are much much cheaper so there are a lot of other effects which uh, are there it's a cascading effect counterfeiting affects everybody right from us as an individual to the community as a whole next slide please so have you ever seen a counterfeit product i'm sure all of us somewhere somehow in the markets in the flea markets or maybe uh, in a on a street or you know with a street vendor somewhere we all have seen counterfeit goods somewhere else how do we recognize counterfeit products you know when i look at a product i can make out uh, maybe the you know the printing is a little off with the labels are a little distorted or the spellings are you know not the same as of a branded product so what these counterfeiters do is they try to create a similar impression that the original product has so that consumers like us who are not very well aware of the original product or who will not like really pay attention to what we are buying uh, will just in the spur of the moment end up buying those counterfeit goods next slide please 
so here is an example uh, these are uh, uh, headphones beats headphones by dr dre's their retail price uh, i would say would range somewhere between uh, 200 to 600 the actual price of an original product but here is this website which is doing an auction for these headphones at a very rock bottom price of say 40 dollars and it has some 3 hours to go for the bidding and x y z things this is a very short term kind of a uh, thing and people just get so lured in and they just see wow this is a very good expensive branded product and it's just selling for 40 dollars why should i not buy it so people like us really get lured into these kind of deals but if you see there will be no returns or exchange guarantees for these kind of sales you will not find the details of the seller or you would find some if you really look deeper you will find some of the odd things which will give away that this product is actually a replica and uh, wherever you see an unbelievable price that's what i uh, you know uh, think wherever the price for a product is unbelievably low you have to really make sure that what you're buying is an original and not a counterfeit in most probability it is going to be a counterfeit product next slide please so here again uh, on the screen, if you can see there are two examples, one is a real shoe and one is a fake shoe. Uh, ideally, if anybody would look at these uh, two shoes, you will not be able to make out the difference between the real and the original. But if you see the, uh, the arrow and the Nike swoosh sign on the real and the fake one, they are different and they give away the product as being counterfeit. Next slide, please. So shoes, as uh, I just mentioned in the last slide, shoes is something which is, uh, you know, it's a very important uh, accessory, so to speak. You wear it for uh, a good part of the day. You walk in them, you run in them. So these kind of uh, products, which are not actually manufactured under uh, proper guidelines, they can cause you more harm than any good. Similarly, uh, here is an example of a charger for you. So charger is an electronic product. And if you, uh, I'm sure we all know that there are certain uh, standards and guidelines which all these products should meet. So what a counterfeiter will do, they will not uh, obviously go through the same manufacturing process, the same guidelines. And there's a certain, uh, you know, power supply which a charger can take and uh, by which you can charge your product. But these products are definitely not the ones uh, which can do that because they are, they are substandard and they are definitely not made with the, under the same guidelines. So here again, it could cause you more harm than uh, it could give you any benefit. You could end up losing your uh, um, electronics, your phones, anything at all. So by now, I'm sure we all uh, would have realized how counterfeiting is a major problem and uh, how, how we can actually uh, protect our brands and our trademarks from counterfeiting. So there are uh, certain ways which have been devised in which brand owners use uh, to safeguard their interests in their intellectual property, uh, particularly the trademarks. And next slide, please. So uh, these are certain legal remedies. I'll not go into the technicalities of these, but these are certain uh, remedies or measures which are uh, available to all brand owners, uh, border control, civil enforcement, criminal enforcement, and police trade. So uh, if you're a brand owner and if you register your uh, intellectual property or your brands or trademarks with the customs, any import which is coming out into the country, they will hold the consignment. And if they feel or if they have reasons to believe that uh, this could be a fake uh, a product or a fake consignment, they will hold the consignment, they will call you the original brand owner and uh, they will check. So this is a very good way of stopping the entry of any kind of a counterfeit product into the country. Civil enforcement is where the, uh, uh, civil enforcement is where the uh, courts are involved. Criminal enforcement is where the police force is involved and uh, 
police raids is so motto means when the police itself find some uh, leads or say some information from somewhere and they come to know that there is a particular place and a particular factory where uh, counterfeit uh, or fake goods are being manufactured so police on itself also can do raids in these kind of uh, premises next slide please so uh, the next few slides i am going to show you some products which has the real product as well as the uh, fake product so this is a nescafe coffee packaging and uh, if you can see uh, the left one is the original while the right one is a counterfeit product if you see the quality of the printing the quality of the material uh, that the counterfeiter has used is definitely not the same as the original and the same has actually given away uh, that it's a counterfeit next slide please another example we all must have used is uh, taza tea and here also you can make out there's a lot of difference in the packaging of the two products the colors and uh, the quality of paper which has been used in the packaging again another example where uh, here the counterfeiter has not actually used the brand or the trademark per se but he's tried to copy the color scheme of the castrol crb plus oil if you see the color scheme is absolutely the same it's white red and green so if uh, a person who is not very educated and who just goes to uh, who seen a uh, castrol crb product might pick up this product duplicate product on the right instead of the one on the left another example of the uh, original shoe versus a duplicate shoe if you know you can cite if you are a little careful you can make out the differences between an original and a duplicate sometimes they're really hard to make out because uh, counterfeiters do really put in a lot of efforts to make the duplicates look like originals but uh, if you are an uh, aware uh, consumer you can actually uh, make the difference next slide so this is a slide uh, this is a video of a real uh, raid and see how it's done can we have the audio so that was a raid video and uh, you could see there are a lot of uh, products which were packed and stacked up exactly and the logos were copied which were there on the product packaging as well as on the product so that was a police raid uh, which was one of the remedies that we had discussed in uh, our earlier slides so this is a slide of a refiller and uh, uh, can we go back please one slide please yeah so these are uh, most probably it looks like a uh, you know a pharmaceutical or a medicinal product and see how it's getting refilled in the old empty bottles so as uh, i mentioned earlier counterfeiting is not uh, limited to uh, luxury goods or products there it is everywhere every product can be faked and every product can be counterfeited and these this particular product like it could be a baby formula it could be a, a product like pharmaceuticals which could actually cause grave damage to us then causing any good we take medicines to get well but these kind of spurious drugs and these kind of spurious uh, medicines can actually make us sick this is another slide where a refilling is being done and this uh, is uh, most probably a gasoline product where i can see the castrol um, uh, tins here so this is another example of how ref counterfeiters do refilling of these essential products next slide please
can we have the sound i don't think the video has a sound Uh, is it audible? Uh, no, I can't hear it actually. You can play the video. I'll just explain what the video is all about. Uh, so this person here in the video, I'll just explain what the video is all about. Uh, he is into the shopping uh, uh, place buying things on a hot afternoon and he just buys a bottle of packaged water. Uh, same price, same looking uh, mineral water. But uh, when he takes a closer look, he finds out that it's a uh, it's a fake uh, water bottle. Though nothing happened uh, to them, obviously, but they really felt that the taste of the water was really off. It was a little bitter than a normal mineral water would taste. So definitely that was not real. It was a fake or a counterfeit mineral water bottle. Exactly. So if it's not real, it's not something that you want. So here, this this is a college going girl, and she's really fond of branded products and buying branded accessories. But obviously, she's a student, so she cannot afford uh, to buy branded products. So if you can see, she's bought sunglasses, which are fake, and the handbag she's carrying in the video is also a fake. So uh, I mean, these two are just having a conversation why we should buy and why we should not buy a branded product. So you'll see at the end of the video what happens with the products that she's bought, which are obviously counterfeits. These are all examples where all counterfeiting happens. So every sector, every area, every product can be counterfeited. See her bags broken here and every stuff she was carrying is on the floor and she is actually vowing not to buy a fake product anymore. Can we go to the last slides? Yes, game time. So on the coming slides, uh, we'll have a few products which are going to be uh, two of the same kind. One is going to be real and others, of course, a counterfeit. So let's see if we can uh, make out which one's a real one and which one's a fake one. In the next slide, we'll see the differences. Can we go to the next slide? See the left one on uh, the screen is unreal because if you see the logo on the shoe, it's not embedded in the way on the real shoe is on the one on the right hand side. The laces are also burned to create the end seals on the original product. And uh, the laces are taped on the unreal or the fake product. So these are minute little differences which uh, give away the products and you have to be really an aware consumer or a very careful buyer before you get into the trap of buying counterfeits. Next slide, please. Here's another example. Uh, the one on the right, next slide. I'll just uh, show the thread count of the leaping cat on the right shoe is definitely more the outline is much more defined and if you see the unreal product the leaping cat logo is a little displaced it's not on the right place as it should be on the shoe and it's too small there's a particular size which the logo is placed this looks too small and the leather if you shoe, if you see the shoe the quality of the leather in both the products will also be different next slide here again, we've uh, seen a lot of examples for the packaging. Uh, this packaging also looks different, which will give away the real product from the original. Also the barcode on the uh, counterfeit or unreal product will most likely be missing because those are not legal products. 
Next slide, please. So remember, trademarks are very, very powerful. Brands are very important. Uh, they transcend all boundaries, all languages. We buy products which are not made in India, which come from outside. So there is no, uh, you know, boundary between uh, consumers buying those products and counterfeiting. As we've seen in the slides and all these videos, is a huge, huge problem. And in fact, it really affects us. It affects the community. It affects the economy. It affects the country. So it has a holistic. So what we need to be doing is we need to be aware. We need to educate ourselves, and we also need to educate the uh, youngsters, the teenagers, especially the age group between 14 to 23, uh, the children who are very much into online buying and, uh, you know, who are very fascinated with products which are branded. So those are the kids which will most likely fall into the trap of counterfeit products. And these products might look lucrative, might look, uh, you know, value for money. But at the end of the day, these are not made as per the standards and they could actually prove harmful to you in many ways. So let's educate ourselves and let's also educate our children, the youngsters, and be mindful of what we buy online. Thank you very much. I think that is the end of the presentation. So I hope uh, I've been able to really um, give you some piece of uh, education in how we can uh, become more aware of our surroundings and be more mindful of the products that we buy, what to look for, how to buy, uh, how to not fall into the traps of counterfeit products which are available everywhere these days. If uh, any one of you have any questions, would like to know anything more, we'd be more than happy to answer. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was a very insightful session. And uh, the YouTube chat box is now enabled. So please drop in your questions so that ma'am can take them. I mean, in the meantime, I'd like to ask you a question which I had myself. Now, uh, is it uh, like according to you, would you feel like it is better if, uh, you know, suppose somebody is going to buy something for a lower price. So is it better to buy an unbranded product for a lower price than to buy a counterfeit product? The counterfeit is definitely a no-no for all the reasons that I've just explained. They would uh, be substandard. There will be no guarantees, no warranties and... Uh, you don't know what the product is made up of, actually. If you see those counterfeit Croc shoes, if you wear them and you go out on the beach or if you go out in the sun, they kind of, uh, you know, give you all sorts of uh, allergies on your feet and all sorts of problems because the plastic that they've used in the, uh, in the shoe is, uh, or the Croc product is not the same as the original brand owner would use. Yes, sir. Another thing, I feel uh, that places like uh, India and China have become really uh, big hubs of uh, counterfeit products because I feel that even some of the counterfeit products which are being used in a lot of Western countries, let's, even in the Americas, let's say, take for example, they are actually being manufactured here because of the uh, cheap, low-cost labor available, which then leads to, you know, here obviously it's being available. So is there something uh, specifically like, do you feel the government should come up with some specific laws to, you know, uh, cut it off at its base, like we saw the video also. 
So how do you think we should go? Definitely that? it's not it's an organized crime I would say it's kind of a very big mafia and uh, it's not uh, present in one country I think it's everywhere. So the brand owners are continuously struggling to you know uh, make their consumers aware uh, how not to fall into the trap of buying uh, products which look fake to you. So you have to, I mean, it's on you. You need to get your, educate your own self before it's your, uh, uh, you know, your recollection of a brand which should come uh, handy when you're buying a product. You should be able to make it out when you see it in the first go. The packaging looks off if there are no codes in it, if, you know, the spellings are changed or the color combination is a little haywire. So all these things should be really kept in mind. And I'm sure most of us, who keep on buying the same products all of the again do get a fair idea if the product is a counterfeit or not and definitely you see laws are there there's a trademarks act there are uh, laws of uh, uh, you know uh, filing suits in for infringement and passing off and so the, the you know the legal framework in india i would particularly say is uh, coming up to speed and a lot of uh, cases of counterfeiting are happening in India and they're quickly being taken action and they're getting this report off. So now the counterfeiters also have a little bit of debt rent somewhere. They also know that, you know, they're not free to mass produce these products from a, a high-end brand anymore. And they are also scared, but they keep on doing it. Why? Because it uh, uh, solves their purpose. It runs their businesses. So that's how it is. It's a, it's a vicious circle, I would say, and it's a very, very huge and an organized uh, uh, crime, I would say. So each one of us have to make our own selves aware of what we are doing. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, what are the legal ramifications against uh, a counterfeiting circle? Like if there is a counterfeiting ring, let's say, there's a distributor, so what are the direct legal or uh, criminal procedure that is uh, undertaken against them? See, you can actually, there are a lot of things which are there involved in the uh, taking action. So, so if you know of a company or a product or, or a manufacturer who's manufacturing counterfeits, we can uh, go in for uh, the civil or criminal action, whatever suits the brand owner. We can go and uh, do investigations in the market to see who's making what kind of products. We can do raids. We can uh, take the uh, local commissioner, which is appointed with us to, with the police and uh, get the factories and premises and uh, in the areas where the products, the counterfeits are being manufactured. They could be sealed and could file a suit against those manufacturers. Ma'am, uh, another thing is uh, Vandana Jha is asking, uh, first of all, she's applauding on this session being very informative and you know there i also would like to mention that uh, we're finding it hard to find questions because there are so many people who are praising the session it's very tough to pick out the questions but one question we're getting is that how do these uh products counterfeit products enter into the market so what is the is there a possibility that we can cut it off at its root like where they enter into the market Right there. Yeah, as there as I right? mentioned, as I mentioned, they have their own network of manufacturers, sellers, resellers, distributors. So it's a huge. It's not like a one uh, one shop or a one distributor. You will find them everywhere. And sometimes we don't even know the names of the parties who are manufacturing these kind of products. And they are uh, in numerous in number, and they will be in every nook and corner. Wherever you see a small remote area where they feel it's safe to start a manufacturing unit, they will start a manufacturing unit there. So for an example, uh, there was this uh, uh, a product being sold on Amazon for one of our clients and they ordered the product just to see and that product was a fake. So we got that investigated. We went to some remote area in UP where the factory was located and the person manufacturing the product was different and the person manufacturing the label which was put on the product was different. And the next time you go there, the factory is just wiped off. They're not even there. So these guys are very well aware of the, uh, you know, the dangers with which they work. And they are very well prepared to uh, take all these actions. And they just, you know, vanish into the air. So it's very difficult to crack down on each and every one of them. 
but it's a continuous endeavor for uh, buyers like us and also for brand owners to keep on tracking and um, nabbing wherever uh, possible. Yeah. Um, one question that we're getting is, uh, can domain name be different than the legal business? I am not sure how that is uh, relevant. I think it has something to do with trademark. But uh, I, the... I kind of uh, didn't follow the question. How can you repeat that? Yes, ma'am. Can... The question is, can domain name uh, be different than the legal business? Yes, why not? It can be. If I'm doing XYZ life on the go, that is my domain name. And I'm making a product on the go, a life on the go. It can be. Why not? It's not necessary to have the same people have extensions in their domain names and it necessarily does not have to match with your business or legal name. Ma'am, what is the difference between passing off and trademark? This is Renuka Srinivas and I think uh, who's asking. I think she wants to know the difference between passing off and infringement. Okay, Ma'am, I guess the, the <laughs> just typed into the comment box so I just... Uh, See, these are uh, these are two actions which a brand owner can initiate: passing off action and an infringement action. And infringement action is available to uh, to, to brands or trademarks which are registered, which have statutory protection. And passing off remedies are available to brands which are uh, not statutory protected, which means they are not registered by the law, but they are being in use or may be in use by the brand. Owner. So that's the difference. Um, uh, Joel Saldana wants to know, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name correctly, but Joel uh, Saldana wants to know, uh, ma'am, would you have your opinion on whether people really bother about counterfeit products when they buy it at cheap uh, prices? See, I won't be surprised if uh, many people really buy counterfeits knowingly because it suits them. So if I want to show off a bag, which is uh, one for the price of what a t-shirt, which is one for the price of the original brand, I might buy it. But people who really do understand what brand owners really put into creating a brand, uh, populating the brand, adhering to the quality that the brand offers, then that person is never going to buy a counterfeit. Real people don't buy fakes. That's what I believe in. Okay, ma'am. Do we have any more questions from uh, the members, faculty members there on the call? Ma'am, another question uh, is uh, from Nikita Gunjan Hasijani asking, who controls the import of counterfeit products? Uh, is uh, it a form of smuggling mafia as well? What is you, can, can you repeat the question? Who controls? Um, who the... controls the import of uh, counterfeit products? Does this have to do with a criminal circle or a mafia as well? See, these are the same people. If I am trying to send in a consignment which has fake goods, so I am obviously a part of that racket. But as I mentioned, one of the slides, border controls is uh, another remedy which is available. So if you register your brand, so your trademarks with the uh, customs authorities, they will be on a lookout for products which they feel might be spurious or which they feel might be uh, counterfeits and not real products. So people importing, exporting counterfeits brands are all part of the same racket, I would say. Same organized crime. Mom, I think this will be the last question that we will be taking. Uh, the question is that, do you feel this represents a larger social problem that we have? Because, uh, you know, even when it comes to counterfeits, there are different levels of counterfeits available. Like, suppose if a product is originally for 50,000, you will also get a copy that is for like, uh, I don't know, maybe 5,000 rupees, then 1,000 rupees, and then 500 rupees. So, like, there are people who are showing off at different levels and different starters of the society. So, do you feel this uh, represents an inherently different social problem as well? Of showing off, let's just say. Yeah, I mean, That's particularly. 
uh, actually i think it's very personal to you it's very subjective person to person if i am somebody who wants to really not bother about the quality and who just wants to show off wearing a branded product i'll buy it so it has to do with the mental makeup of the consumers as well you can't really you know tell somebody you uh, don't spend money or spend money on buying a product which you cannot afford if you cannot afford simply don't buy it i mean that's what i believe and that's what my thought is on the topic thank you ma'am thank you ma'am this is a very nice uh, session and i would just like to reiterate once again that we're getting a lot of positive feedbacks on youtube so i'd like you also once the session is over maybe to go and check them out so sure. now just to uh, you know thank you and propose a vote a uh, formal vote of thanks for both the days i would like to welcome dia ma'am once again to take over and uh, propose the vote of thanks dia ma'am over to you thank you so much mr gibran uh, good evening everyone uh, respected dr swati sable ma'am honorable speakers mim faculties all participants and vip team i assistant professor dia udasi feel honored and privileged to get an opportunity to propose a word of thanks on this important occasion as rightly quoted by john maxwell a leader is the one who knows the way goes the way and shows the way this is true for our director dr swati sable ma'am who has supported us in conducting today's faculty development program thank you ma'am for giving all of us this wonderful learning opportunity on behalf of whole team of mansukhan institute of management i extend a very hearty word of thanks to all the participants who have joined today for this faculty development program a big thank you to our speakers abhishek sir and shabnam ma'am who have been taking, taking out their time and enlightening us with their expertise on this topic intellectual property rights and trademarks I'm sure all of us enjoyed and learned a lot from splendid presentation of yours. I would also thank like you to so thank. Much. I would also like to thank BIAP team for all the technical support and arrangements which helped us to conduct this program smoothly and successfully. Finally, I would like to conclude: the capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. The willingness to learn is a choice. So, thank you once again to all the participants for choosing to be with us. keep learning keep growing thank you so much now i hand it over to jibran uh, to conclude the session thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you for your words and uh, with this i would just like to you know tell you all that we are really happy for uh, all of you and this it was uh, our pleasure to bring this uh, session to you as we come to the end of this today program i would like to propose uh, thanks to swati sable ma'am for giving us the opportunity to hold the session and to both the speakers uh, and as well vishakha ma'am thank you for helping us organize this wonderful session uh, credit uh, is due i thank would also you. like to thank all the participants thank you thank you ma'am once again yeah i would also like to thank all the participants who joined in not only from across india but across the globe thank you for helping us make this a success and uh, we hope that the knowledge that you've gained you actually you know use it in the real world right now we can't go out but soon we will be able to and uh, you're better prepared to fight against fakes and counterfeits and you're better uh, protected when you finally do go out and thank you use them for online yeah. shopping <laughs> yes you have to be careful on that as well <laughs> yeah uh, so please uh, do check us out on uh, our social media handles as well we are under biap official and check out our youtube channel which contains more such webinars and uh, stay safe take care until next time